Over on Jaguar Gator 8, a new college football video is out. In this video, we talk about a dumb decision made by Herm Edwards during last Saturday's game between Arizona State and Eastern Michigan that eventually got him fired. Click the card in the upper right corner to watch. And join me tonight on Twitch at 9pm Eastern where we'll play NFL Trivia for cash prizes. Link to play below. And now, on with our feature presentation. September 21st, 2014. Exactly eight years ago to the day. I remember the 21st night of September very well. The night before, I hopped on a plane at JFK, missed the ending to my senior year of high school homecoming, and flew down to Jacksonville for the home opener to take place that Sunday against the Indianapolis Colts. The game was an absolute disaster, and left me questioning a lot of my life decisions that led me to this point. The first half was truly the worst half of football I'd ever seen the Jags play at that point. At halftime, the Colts were up 30 to nothing in a game that was an absolute bloodbath. The Jaguars had six drives in the first half. Not once did they even cross their own 40-yard line. You had four punts, a fumble, and then a final drive that was a one-play 13-yard drive to go into the half. Chad Henney had led the Jags to 22 net passing yards. The Jaguars did not get a first down until there was 7 minutes and 35 seconds left in the second quarter, at which point they were already down 20 to nothing. The only saving grace in that game was that in the second half, in a long overdue move that should have happened after the Washington game the previous week, Chad Henney got benched for Blake Bortles, ushering in a brand new era of Jags football, as he was the quarterback from that point on. But other than that, the game was a disaster. Nothing like sweating in Swampland, Florida in the middle of the afternoon while your team looks like they're playing a completely different sport. For me, and for a ton of Jags fans, the game marked yet another embarrassment and disappointment in the rivalry against the Colts. Let's just face it, the Colts absolutely had our number down in Jacksonville. At this point, the Jags and Colts had met 12 times in Jacksonville before, and the Colts were 8-4, winning the last three. Since 2007, when the Jags got absolutely walloped on Monday Night Football in a 29-7 loss, the Colts had won 6 out of 8 in Jacksonville, and of the two wins, one of those wins was in Week 17 in 2011, when a good portion of the Jags fan base was rooting for the Jaguars to lose so that the Colts couldn't get the number one pick, and pun completely intended, luck their way into getting Andrew Luck. I'd been to my fair share of Jags-Colts games, from the 2007 game on Monday Night Football, to the close loss in 2008 on Thursday Night Football, to what was, at the time, my most heartbreaking loss in Jags history in 2009 on Thursday Night Football, where the Jaguars lost 35-31 to the 2012 game on Thursday Night Football, which was more famous for Mike Malarkey throwing his clipboard in a rage more than anything else, to now this game, pain was all I ever knew in this rivalry, and I wondered when it was going to change. For my entire life, from late elementary school when I became a fan, to middle school, to high school, the amount of Jags Colts games I had been to, only to have my heart ripped out and shred into a million pieces pretty much every single year, was so much. I wanted it to change so badly. I wanted things to be different. That day in 2014 was the last time the Jaguars ever lost a game at home to the Colts. Seriously. I was a senior in high school who was in the stadium that day when it happened. The next time the Colts even have a chance to break the streak, I will have to legally be off my parents' insurance plan. For eight straight years, when the Colts traveled to Jacksonville, or that one-off year in 2016 when the game was in London, the Jaguars emerged victorious. So much has changed in the world since the last time the Colts beat the Jags on the road. The last time the Colts beat the Jaguars in Jacksonville, the leading rusher that Sunday across all games, with 176 rushing yards and a win against the Texans, was Rashad Jennings. You haven't thought about him in a hot minute, have you? The Disney movie Big Hero 6 hadn't even been released yet. The song Uptown Funk, which everyone in the world knows, feels like it's been around forever, and will continue to be played until the end of time at celebrations and weddings and parties, hadn't come out yet. And the most recent game that LeBron James played was as a member of the Miami Heat. And for those who know the streak, they know just how little sense it makes. By all accounts, this streak defies all logic. For one, it's not as though the Jaguars just have the Colts' number, period. It's only in Jacksonville. The last nine times that the Jaguars and Colts met in Indianapolis, the Jaguars lost all but one of those games. 
with the exception coming in 2017. It would be one thing if it was like the Broncos Chiefs rivalry, where the Chiefs have Denver's number no matter where they play. But it's not. It's just in Jacksonville, where the Colts have all their talent sucked out of them like their whole roster is made up of NBA players in the Space Jam universe. Except in this Space Jam universe, Michael Jordan and Bill Murray never come to save the day. So they lose their talent forever. Because that's what it feels like. And number two, and perhaps most importantly, the Jaguars freaking suck! The streak started in 2015, and since then, the Jaguars have compiled a record of 34 and 81. They've won a grand total of 29.6% of their games. They're averaging less than five wins a season. And that's with the 2017 season, where against all odds, they somehow made it to the AFC Championship and came one play away from going to the Super Bowl, which you can learn more about by clicking the card in the upper right corner. The Colts have been totally fine in that stretch. They haven't been great by any means, but they're 57, 57 and one in the 115 games played since the start of the 2015 season. So Thanos would be perfectly proud of how balanced they are. And yet, this team that has been arguably the worst in football in that stretch has dominated at home against this one opponent. The Jaguars have beaten the Colts three times since they won their last road game. Think about that. The last time the Jaguars won a game on the road was in week 15 of the 2019 season, when they beat the Oakland Raiders. They hadn't even moved to Vegas yet. And since that game, even though the Jaguars have yet to win another road game, losing 18 straight, they've beaten the Colts not once, not twice, but three times. The Jaguars have lost 31 of their last 37 games dating back to week 16 of the 2019 season, meaning that they've won six games. In any other scenario, the Jaguars are 3-31 in that stretch. Against the Colts in Jacksonville, they're 3-0. For some more perspective, the last time the Jaguars beat an opponent in the NFC was week one of 2018, when they beat the New York Giants. Since the last time they beat an NFC opponent, the Jaguars have won five games at home against the Colts. And sure, there are some wins that the Jags have had during this streak that make total sense. In 2017, I don't think anyone batted an eye when the Jaguars beat the Colts 30-10. The Jags were clearly the better team, and they dominated the road matchup earlier in the season, so everyone saw that coming. No one was too surprised about 2015, when the Colts were coming off of a 35-point loss the week before, were starting Matt Hassel back at quarterback, and just got annihilated by Jacksonville and their surprisingly good offense, with the Jags winning 51-16. But some of these games make no sense whatsoever. Some of these games seem like surefire things in favor of the Colts, and yet, the Jaguars won, because who knows how. In 2018, the Colts were on a five-game winning streak, and the Jaguars, after starting the season 3-1, and one, were on a seven-game losing streak, and were completely reeling, having just fired their offensive coordinator and having turned to Cody Kessler, a quarterback, who couldn't throw more than three yards down the field. And somehow, despite the Jaguars not even scoring a touchdown all day, they won 6-0. The Colts averaged 34.5 points per game over their last six before this one. Against the Jaguars on this day in December, zero. In 2020, everyone and their mother had the Colts destroying the Jaguars. The Jaguars had the fire sale of all fire sales in the offseason, completely depleted their roster of any talent, and looked like the clear-cut worst team in football entering the season. Meanwhile, the Colts not only looked better on paper, but had Phillip Rivers starting, and Rivers was always Jacksonville's Achilles heel, dating back to his time with the Chargers. Somehow, Gardner Minshew completed 95% of his passes, with a lone incompletion being a drop, and the Jaguars won the game 27-20 by scoring the final 10 points of the game in the fourth quarter. Oh, in Jacksonville, they went 1-15 that year. This was their only win of the season, at home against the Colts because of course it was. In 2021, we had the clown game. The Jaguars entered at 2-14, had lost eight straight games, and were coming off of a 40-point loss to the New England Patriots. Not only did they have the worst record in football, but the fans were so fed up with Trent Baalke as the general manager that they dressed up as clowns and came into the stadium vocal about their displeasure. It got so bad that during the game, not only was a fire Balky chant able to be heard on TV, 
but this happened during the game, where a fan was asked to answer a multiple choice trivia question and said this. This wasn't even about a game. This was a congregation of angry fans trying to make their frustrations heard. So this should be an easy win for the Colts, right? They need to win this game to make the playoffs, and they have everything to play for, while the Jags have nothing to play for and have their entire fan base working against them. And somehow, the Jaguars blow the doors off of the Colts and win it 26-11. It makes no sense. And then, there's what happened on Sunday, where of course, the Jaguars just had to win yet again by a final score of 24-0, and where Matt Ryan threw no touchdowns and three interceptions, was sacked five times, and posted a passer rating of 34, which is worse than if he did nothing but spike the ball into the ground on every single play. Eight straight wins. Against the rest of the NFL in the eight years of this stretch, the Jaguars are 26-81, winning 24.2% of the time. In this stretch at home against the Colts, they're 8-0. So after Sunday's hilarious shutout against the Colts, I had to do some digging and some research. How historic is this streak? Just how absurd is this winning streak to not only win eight straight games over eight consecutive seasons against an opponent, but for a team this bad to do so? Spoiler alert, this is the craziest streak in NFL history. Nothing is even in the same zip code as what the Jags are doing. The Jags are doing something right now that has never been done in the history of the NFL, and might never be done again. That's how absurd it is. Cherish this insanity, because no one can explain it. I looked at every instance in the post-merger era, so from 1970 on, where a team won eight straight games on their home turf against a team in the division. Note that these had to be in consecutive years, so I'm not counting it if, hypothetically, you had a four-game winning streak after 2001, but then realignment happened and you were split up from that team, so you then only met three times in the next 12 years at home. The one exception to the rule that I made, which came up a few times, was if you had an ongoing streak and couldn't play against that opponent in 1982, because the game got cancelled due to the strike. For that, I just didn't look at your record from that season, but I kept the streak going, because to say that the consecutive season streak ended because of that wouldn't be in the spirit of this stat. Then, quite simply, I looked at what each team's record was over the course of that streak. As an example, from 2002 to 2014, the Indianapolis Colts won every game at home against the Houston Texans. I looked at what the Colts' record was from 2002 to 2014, and likewise looked at what the Texans' record was over that same time stretch. Then, I subtracted the two winning percentages to see what the difference was. As an example, the Colts won 69.2% of the time in that stretch and the Texans won 42.3% of the time in that stretch. Take 69.2, subtract 42.3, and you get 26.9. As in, there's a .269 difference in their winning percentage. Not counting the Jaguars' cult streak, a minimum winning streak of 8 games at home against a divisional opponent has happened 38 times before. You can see how that looks plotted out right here. I'm not going to go through every single streak on this list, because otherwise, this video would be 8 hours long, but you're probably noticing a theme. The team that has this streak, more often than not, is significantly better over that stretch than the team they're beating up on. At the very top, you have what the Los Angeles Rams did to the New Orleans Saints between 1970 and 1977 in the NFC West. In those 8 years, the Rams went 77-31-4, winning 69.6% of the time while the Saints, who were god-awful, win 27-81-4, winning just 25.9% of the time. That comes out to the highest difference on here of .437. Also in that range of a .4 are the Dallas Cowboys, who had an 8-year winning streak from 1975-83 to against the New York Giants, with 1982 being excluded as the two teams couldn't meet in Dallas due to the strike, and the San Francisco 49ers who had an 8-year streak from 1991-98 to 98 against the Rams, who were in Los Angeles for the first four years, and St. Louis for the final four years. But while those are the extremes, 36 of the 38 times that this has happened in the post-merger era, it came not just from a team that was better than their opponent, 
but from a team that was at least 10 percentage points better than their opponent from a difference perspective. This means that there are only two times in the last half century that the post-merger era has existed that a team that was worse than their opponent went on a winning streak at home. One of them came from 1996 to 2004, when Dallas went on a nine-game winning streak at home against Washington. In that stretch, Dallas went to 65 and 79, winning 45.1% of their games. However, even though Washington was better, it wasn't by much. Washington went 67, 76, and 1 over those nine seasons, winning 46.9% of their games. That means that the difference between the two teams was 1.8 percentage points. And the other time came in the AFC West, when from 1981 to 1989, excluding 1982 because the teams didn't play each other during the strike, the Chiefs went 55, 70, and 2, and for whatever reason, had Seattle's number at home at Arrowhead Stadium. In that stretch, while the Chiefs only won 44.1% of their games, the Seahawks won 55.1% of their games, going 70 and 57. That comes out to a difference of 11 percentage points. Although even with that, there's a bit of an asterisk next to that. In 1990, the Seahawks finally broke the drought after beating the Chiefs on a Hail Mary with no time left, in the famous Derek Thomas 7-sack game. If the Chiefs won that game, and if the Seahawks didn't complete that Hail Mary, then it would have been a 17-game winning streak going from 1981 to 1998. And the Chiefs, over those 17 years, had a better record than the Seahawks. So that number would be in the positives. Still, this was the record. 11 percentage points in the negatives. Here is one final look at the chart before we throw the Jaguars and the Colts into the mix. Again, just about every data point in this is in the positives with one not even having two percentage points separating them, and another one only being there at the bottom on a technicality and a fluke play. You don't see worse teams putting up streaks lasting nearly a decade against better teams. It just doesn't happen. But the Jacksonville Jaguars have something to say about that. Because now, when we look at the records of the Jaguars and the Colts from 2015 to 2022, it's time to plot them on this chart. Let's see what it looks like. Yep, there's no one in the same stratosphere as the Jaguars. From 2015 to 2022, the Jaguars have gone 34 and 81, winning 29.6% of their games. The Colts, over that same time frame, have gone 57, 57 and 1, winning 50% of their games. Subtract the two numbers, and you get a difference of negative 20.4 percentage points. If the results were flipped, and the Colts were the ones doing the streak on the Jaguars, the difference would be around the midpoint on the positive side, and wouldn't look out of place at all. But it's the opposite. It's the Jaguars, the freaking Jaguars, pulling this one off. Nothing even comes close. And you can really see that if we say that Derek Thomas gets that eighth sack and the Seahawks don't complete the Hail Mary, meaning we remove them from the list and put them in the positives. You really see now just how much of an outlier the Jaguars are. And the Jags haven't been doing this with luck, or last second plays, or flukes. Most of the time, they've done it by just being completely and wholeheartedly better than the Colts were on that day. It's a streak that truly, and I mean truly, makes no sense whatsoever. Why the Jaguars are the worst team in football, but turn into the 85 Bears when they play the Colts in Jacksonville, I have no idea. Why the Colts are fairly decent most of the time, but turn into the expansion Tampa Bay Buccaneers team from 1976 when they fly down to Florida and play the Jaguars, I have no clue. But one thing is for certain. If NFL history has anything to say about this, we will probably never see a streak like this happen again. Who knows when this streak comes to an end? Hopefully for my sake and the sake of Jags fans across the nation, not anytime soon. But I'm going to enjoy it while it lasts, and just soak in the absurdity. Because at this point, it's all you can really do. Get your official Jaguar Gear 9 merchandise by going to jg9shop.com, and be sure to like this video, ring the notification bell, subscribe down below if you haven't already, as it helps the channel out a lot, and be sure to check out Twitch every Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern for your chance to play NFL trivia and win cash prizes. Link in the description below. If you want to see videos like this condensed down to 60 seconds, then follow me on TikTok at Jaguar Gear 9. To see college football videos, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 8.
to see highlight videos of players throughout the history of the NFL, subscribe to JG9 Highlights. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping out the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. So you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.